She was terrifically dedicated. She was terrifically passionate, uh, very clear about right and wrong, driven. A sensible person. <laughs> Margaret Sanger, born on September 14, 1879, was a small, petite, and naive-looking woman. But beneath the surface, Miss Sanger was anything but. Soon enough, the world would see the true, powerful, and inspiring Margaret Sanger. She who would shortly change history itself by giving women their well-deserved right to control their own fertility. A right that should have been protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution. Miss Sanger was faced with many challenges through her incredible movement. There are many rules and restrictions that were intent on getting in her way, one of which was the Comstock Clause. The Comstock Clause were passed by the U.S. Congress in 1873, making it illegal to have, use, or distribute obscene material, of which was included the use and advertisement of birth control and contraceptives. The Comstock Law was created and named after Anthony Comstock, who was a United States Postal Inspector. He first proposed the law when visiting his hometown, New Canaan, Connecticut, where he was appalled to find that the town was teeming with prostitutes and pornography. He was greatly offended by the graphic advertising of birth control instruments. He believed with great certainty that the accessibility of contraceptives promoted luxury and lasciviousness. Within the Comstock law, it states that whoever within the District of Columbia or any of the territories of the United States shall sell or shall offer to sell or to lend or to give away or in any manner to exhibit or shall otherwise publish or offer to publish in any manner an obscene book, pamphlet, paper, writing, advertisement, or other article of an immoral nature for the prevention of conception shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and on conviction thereof in any court of the United States. The punishment for a violation of the Comstock Law was anywhere from six months to five years in prison or a fine of up to $2,000. Until she started to publish The Woman Rebel, contraception wasn't talked about, it wasn't written about, it was impolite to bring up the subject. Well, Mr. Wallace, it's hard to say that any one thing has made one do this or that. I think from the very beginning, uh, I came from a large family. My mother died young. Eleven children that made an impression on me as a child. I was a trained nurse, went among the people. I saw women who asked to have some means whereby they wouldn't have to have another pregnancy too early after the last child, the last abortion, which many of them had. So there's a number of things that are one after the other that really made you feel that you had to do something. From the beginning of Miss Sanger's life, she has felt a connection between her and the birth control movement. Her mother was pregnant 18 times and had 11 children, and eventually she died worn out and ill from tuberculosis. Miss Sanger always blamed her mother's early death on excessive pregnancies. As she progressed with her life, she found yet another reason to be interested in the birth control movement, Sadie Sachs. Whilst Margaret Sanger was a nurse, she had many patients who were suffering from similar problems as Margaret's mother. Throughout her years of struggle, Miss Sanger often told the story of Sadie Sachs, a poor patient of Margaret's who was very ill and had performed a self-inflicted abortion. Miss Sachs begged for information on how to prevent pregnancies. It was illegal for Margaret to give out this information, so Miss Sachs was advised abstinence and sent home. Months later, Miss Sanger went to Miss Sachs' home only to find her dead from another self-inflicted abortion. Well, when birth control was illegal, um, doctors did a lot of uh, fixing up of women after uh, botched abortions uh, um, because the abortions were illegal as well, and, and so women had these unsafe illegal abortions, and then if they were lucky, they would end up in the hospital with uh, hospital care. Furious about Miss Sachs and determined to prevent further needless deaths, Miss Sanger founded a newspaper called The Women Rebel in 1910, which featured information on birth control techniques. An excerpt from a March 1914 issue stated, As is well known, a law exists forbidding the imparting of information on this subject, the penalty being several years imprisonment. Is it not time to defy this law? And what fitter place could be found than in the pages of The Women Rebel? 
Indicted under the Comstock laws for the distribution of contraceptive information, Margaret Sanger was arrested, but before her trial, Miss Sanger fled to Europe. Eventually, the charges were dismissed, and in 1916, she returned to the United States where she and her sister, Ethel Byrne, opened the first U.S. birth control clinic in the slums of Brooklyn, New York. They were arrested for being a public nuisance, spent 30 days in jail, and appealed the court's decision. The publicity of her trial was so huge that it helped gain awareness for her cause. People finally began to notice and understand what was going on and how it affected women. In 1920, New York state law was changed to allow doctors to give out contraceptive advice for the cure and prevention of disease, disease that could be caused by being pregnant. This was the first major step taken towards women's rights to control their fertility. In 1921, Sanger organized the American Birth Control League, now known as the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, a place where people can go for anything from information and or treatment for STDs to prenatal care. Also, in 1927, she planned the first World Population Conference in Geneva, where she argued that besides the benefit birth control had for women, it would also aid the health of a society in the following ways, physically, economically, and politically. You know, I, I don't think there's anything better than planned families, and, and, um, and that, that's Margaret Sanger brought that to America. Sanger was a really um, smart and strategic woman, and at one point in Boston, there was a gag order placed on her. Um, the court said that she was not allowed to deliver a speech on birth control. Uh, so rather than let her that defeat her, she came up with a strategy where she wore masking tape across her mouth and had the speaker uh, announce that, she, that Margaret Sanger was unable to speak. So essentially through the gag order, she found more and more media uh, attention actually following the gag order uh, brought her far more notoriety than any public speech would have. For many years later, Miss Sanger fought court case after court case against federal post office and male medical establishments to legalize birth control. Many of these she came out victorious. By 1932, more than 80 birth control clinics were in use in the United States. In 1936, largely due to Miss Sanger's tireless lobbying, the Comstock Law was reinterpreted to allow the mailing of contraceptives, a huge triumph for Miss Sanger. In 1937, the American Medical Association recommended that contraception be taught in all medical schools and that birth control methods should be researched. In 1952, Miss Sanger became the first president of the International Planned Parenthood Federation of America. She traveled the world advocating and giving speeches about birth control. She politically and monetarily supported the creation of the first birth control pills which became available in 1960. Sadly, six years later, on September 6, 1966, she died of heart failure in an Arizona nursing home. She was 87 years old. The Comstock Law still exists today, but applies only to the banning of pornography and other obscene materials but the distribution and information about contraceptives is now legal. Without Sanger's heroic 60-year struggle, it is likely that the global population would be even higher than 7 billion. The Comstock laws were preventing the information about birth control from reaching the women who needed it. They were dying from self-inflicted abortions and having more children than their bodies could handle. Miss Sanger believed that women had the right to choose for themselves how many children they had. She wanted to provide women with the information needed to choose parenthood responsibly. Sanger's influence drastically changed the amount of children American women have from seven children per family in the 1800s to an average of two children per family in 2013. Margaret Sanger's legacy is that now 62% of American women use some kind of contraceptive. This has led to population control and the reduction of unwanted pregnancies and unnecessary deaths. Today we have facilities like Planned Parenthood all over the U.S. This was Margaret Sanger's dream. She wanted women to have the right to control their own fertility and the responsibility to choose whether they wanted to bear children or not. Today, because of the actions of one woman, 350 million Americans have access to safe and dependable birth control.